Go gently where the butterfly rests. Pass carefully by where the partridge nests. Step lightly through the sage and the thyme. Come with me up the hillside with your hand in mine. Tis in these rocks that the butterfly sleeps, and in mountain breezes her memory keeps. By the green of the spring and the blue of the sky, her spirit flies free when the long shadows lie. Stay alert for the place where the dark spider bores. Look up overhead to where the high falcon soars. Be awestruck and tremble at the cliff falling steep. Be quenched by the waters of a well running deep. Stand proud on the ridge with your head held up high. Look out to the sea and reach up for the sky. Stay true to yourself and our dear Mother Earth. Light a candle in the dark to find a new birth. The beautiful butterfly shape of the Prophetess Ilias mountain complex creates a multitude of options for excursions to explore its secrets and discover its wild spirit. When visiting the mountain for the first time, it is necessary to choose from all the possible alternatives. However, given the relatively easier terrain on the slopes above Kamariani Monastery, a route to the main summit from there, where they return the same way, provides a delightful opportunity to see most of the main aspects of the mountain. It is bound to whet the appetite for more. The varieties of points of access, exit and directions of travel will keep a mountain walker who has become enchanted by this mountain with many days of exploration. The variations become almost endless when the added dimensions of morning and evening excursions and visits at different times of year are thrown into the mix. Varying light conditions and seasons bring new experiences on mountains and encounters with wildlife and plants are enriched by coming in different seasons. By unhurriedly climbing the slopes overlooking the coast of Ayas Andonis, weaving to and fro to find a line of least resistance through the thorny vegetation and rock outcrops, height is gained steadily. Short pauses to enjoy the coolness of the northerly breeze and survey the ever-expanding views enhance our contact with the mountain environment. The hillside is alive with birdsong and the fragrance of wild herbs such as sage and thyme. Bushes of cistus grow widely and are displaying a show of pretty pink flowers for the spring. In the shade of the vegetation, predatory spiders lurk in burrows excavated into the earth where they wait for an unwary victim to stray too close to the burrow's opening. The more direct route to the main summit of Prophetess Ilias traverses around the southeast facing slope below the summit which crowns the ridge coming up from Kamariani. I have called this summit the Kamariani Peak 
because it is the first summit that is reached when climbing the mountain from this direction. Rather than climbing up to the Kamariani Peak, our line of approach aims to meet the ridge line at a lower point to the south of the peak. At its summit, the Kamariani Peak feels like a random jumble of rocks, but when seen from further south along the main ridge, it has the appearance of a lion's head with a flowing mane hanging on its left shoulder. The lion squats on the ridge and looks out west, guardian of Pandalimana Monastery, which is perched precariously on steep scree slopes 400 metres below. The lion's tail forms the crest of the ridge falling away from the summit eastwards towards Ayas and Donis and Kamariani. The peak located in the most northwesterly situation is the Pandalimana Peak, so called since it towers above the monastery at Pandalimana. This peak is a huge rock buttress, rearing up to 600 meters above the sea. Her height and position is such that this is the first peak to catch the rays of the rising sun. Shortly after descending south from the Kamariani Peak, there is a spy hole view of Pandalimana Monastery through a keyhole formed by a narrow gully. Today's unexpected chance encounter is with a praying mantis that alights close to where we are passing. It is for sure a primeval creature, moving in a somewhat unsteady gait on its long spindly legs. It doesn't walk very easy, does it? Yeah. It's probably been walking up and down this bloody hill for a two from to Yeah, you just wanted the lizard will grab the mantis. The mantis too is in for an unexpected and unwelcome encounter as a small lizard has wandered into the vicinity and decides to take a speculative lunge at the ungainly insect. After the ridge drops to a shallow dip, it rises again to a less prominent top where the main spine of the mountain and an adjoining ridge join hands. The subsidiary ridge heads off southwest, forming the high rock wall enclosing the huge mountain amphitheatre which is entered from Pandalimana. This ridge has a very prominent rock pinnacle situated in the bottom of a conspicuous notch. The pinnacle can be seen from a position further on towards Prophetis Ilias summit. This feature led me to call this ridge Pinnacle Ridge. The remains of an old threshing circle on the ridge is evidence that cultivation was once undertaken even at this height on Telos's highest mountain. Nearby the tumbled walls of two buildings still remain, probably all that is left of a rudimentary seasonal shelter and an enclosure for milking goats. New growth on dwarf hollyoaks which hug the ground may be a sign that goat numbers on the mountain are reducing, allowing this rugged plant to regenerate and recolonize its old habitat.
Beyond the tumble down ruins, the ridge climbs again as we commence the final stage of our journey to Propertis Ilias. From here, the pinnacle and the notch on Pinnacle Ridge are clearly seen when looking back towards where we came. <laughs> 